I have a brand new keyboard here. Uh, this is a Bluetooth, like I call it like a mobile keyboard. It's the uh, ThinkPad TrackPoint Keyboard 2. Um, I'm a big fan of ThinkPad keyboards, specifically the old school ones, um, but I do like the modern ones too. I have a ThinkPad Z13 and a Legion over there, um, which I really, really like. And I have some old ThinkPads in my closet. So I decided to get this Bluetooth. I've been using this for quite a while, uh, kind of mobile-wise. This is the Master Keys, MX uh, Master Keys, uh, the mini one. It's good for pretty much anything. I've used it on iOS. I've used it on my Steam Deck. I've used it on my uh, PC. And it's a really, really nice keyboard. But I decided to get this one mainly because uh, this one here, the MX does not have any type of navigation. So don't you don't have like a track point nib. You don't have like a um, trackpad. So uh, I decided to get this one because it has a little nib, which could be useful specifically for my Steam Deck. So I don't have to have a mouse hooked up. And also this, if I want to use it in desktop mode, I don't like to have all the dongles and stuff. I just like to do it via Bluetooth if possible. USB type A to C, which is fine. Uh, it's Bluetooth, this one is Bluetooth, so you don't have to use that. I believe you can use, it. yeah, so you can use several different ways to connect. You can wire it up with the USB-C directly, which you can also use to charge, but uh, you can wire it in directly if need be, which if you're worried about lag, you can do that. Uh, you can do Bluetooth, and you can do the little uh, universal receiver dongle thing. But like, you know, these are like the, all the other devices you can get out there. So you can just plug it in right there and get, uh, what is it, 2.4 gigahertz direct. So you'll get no lag, or less lag. Uh, wired, so you get probably no lag. And then you can do Bluetooth as well. Uh, it has buttons there, so you can go from Windows to Android. I believe Windows is the mode you're gonna put it in. I think it has to do with like the buttons that connect. I don't think it has to do with connection. I'm not sure about that, but I think that's how that works. Um, so you can basically plug it in. Uh, you can switch it over to Android, which I'll test it to see which would work on an iPad and a Steam Deck. Obviously, um, Linux is neither of those and Apple is neither of those. So, uh, And there's your switch there. You can go from the dongle over to Bluetooth. I'm not sure what that other symbol is. Maybe that's wired. I don't know what that little symbol is there but you can switch between those two. Well, compared to the master keys, because that's what a lot of people have used, this is very slim, obviously. Uh, you know, it's just a thin piece of metal, very well built. You get that little like bump there to raise it up. So that way it's kind of thick if you throw it in the bag. Uh, but the keyboard itself is really thin and it's raised. There's no way you can raise it up lower or higher. I did put these little rubber feet on there because sometimes uh, if I'm typing on my keyboard on a laptop and I just, you know, I want, I don't want to wear up my keyboard. I want a little bit more travel or something a little bit more hefty, I can set this on top. That was more of an issue when I had a thinner, when I had that Razer. The Razer had a terrible keyboard, like just awful. So I'd set this on top and type on this. Um, this is the keyboard here. So flat wise, when it's flat, it's like typing on a laptop, very, very flat. Um, in terms of thickness, uh, it's a slightly thicker at the top there than this here, but in terms of the, the butt, it's uh, thinner overall. The keyboard itself is bigger, um, not much in terms of width, it's very, very little, but you do have the controls there. So left click, right click, center mouse. Um, so obviously it's gonna be bigger to accommodate that. All right, let's feel the, uh, so when it's flat down, like I said, um, it's very flat, kind of like a laptop, laptop, but you can raise it up with the feet and you get a nice little raise. That's really nice actually, um, we'll leave it like that. The nib um, feels fine. I'm going to test that out later. It doesn't feel as premium as some of the uh, ThinkPads that I've used in the past, where my ThinkPad Z13, but it feels fine. Nothing wrong with that. These feel a little, they're okay. A little gummier, again, than like a, like a, even an older ThinkPad, like a T61 or whatever that I have in the closet, T43. Not as good, but it's fine. You know, all your standard functions there, you get escape, you get all your F keys, volume up, volume down, you know, brightness, uh, switch screens, uh, that might be turning trackpad off or something, I'm not sure what that is, settings. So all your standard settings. Now uh, it's geared towards Windows, but again, you can use Android, I'm sure that would bring up some type of Android menu. Yep, so it's fine, very, very light. Um, it's lighter than the master, by a little bit. It's a little bit more larger, but it's a little bit larger, but it's a little bit, little bit lighter. Um, these are both excellent. I would say the key feeling on this 
it feels nicer, mainly because the, it's a metal deck. The keys feel more premium. The, the mechanisms feel similar. I would say there's not a big difference in the actual mechanism whatsoever. However, the key caps on this feel better. They're divoted in, which is fine. You don't need that, but it's fine. Um, but the quality of the materials feels more premium. This has like a slightly cheaper, almost like if you took a ThinkPad and you bought one of those cheap, you know, like Dell keyboards that they just ship for free. Um, the plastic quality on the cap is like that versus this is a premium product. Interestingly, they're almost similar in price. This is around $100 Canadian. I didn't pay that much, but um, I think it's like 120 retail or something like that. I think I got it for like 70. Um, whereas this, this is more expensive for sure. This is like 130, 140, but they're in the same ballpark in terms of price. Um, and right away the master feels better. Does not have any navigation though. You know, and then you can compare it to something like this. Um, a lot of people use these as like media. Like this is actually just plugged into my TV because um, using a mouse is irritating, incredibly irritating. And you know, this, it's fine, but it's not a nice, like it has incredible amounts of flex. It's just a cheap plastic thing. Like you can see, it's just cheap plastic. Um, the trackpad is fine. I mean, these are kind of expensive when they're full price. They're like 40 or 50 bucks Canadian. I think I paid 20, so you can get these on sale for cheap. But these are great. Like if you just get this, you plug it into like a TV or something, it's fine. I wouldn't use this with like an iPad or you know a device or Steam Deck or something. It's just not great, but you could, you certainly could. Okay, so let's see, accessory. That wasn't there before, so let's track point two. Okay, we'll click that. Type in the number, eight, six, one, three, eight, one. Enter. Okay, and this is set up on Windows setting. I'm not sure if that matters. I think it doesn't actually matter what it pairs to. I think it has to do with the shortcut buttons you're gonna do, like the Windows key. So let's see. Uh, and there we go, right away. Um, so we can see here, you can actually see that on the screen, yes you can, barely. But uh, yeah, so I'll hold it like that. Probably not the best setup, but um, yet the nib works. I am not left-handed, so this is probably the worst setup possible. But uh, Windows key doesn't do anything. Maybe it was an Android, it's like it is typing. This is a test of the Lenovo track point two. Let's put that around. Keyboard. Keyboard. Can't really see what I'm doing here. Okay. There's that there. The track point seems to work fine. Um, it's a little like weird and delayed. Um, not that it's a track point issue. It could be like, it, it almost glides. It's like, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it uh, seems to work fine uh, overall. I don't know what that ever keyboard, I don't know what it's called, but let's say you take this with you like that. I mean, you could use it like that. Set this up with the folio case. Rather than spending $400 Canadian, uh, you, know, you can just type like that. That's a perfectly fine experience in my opinion. I don't have any issues with that. I could do that all day if that was your thing. So in terms of ranking, uh, this is the best membrane scissor switch keyboard that exists, period. This or the larger version. In terms of typing experience, there's nothing better. It's premium quality, it is excellent. However, it lacks all navigation, so you are, must use an input like a finger or a track point or a trackpad or a keyboard, so you're limited. So best typing experience in terms of Bluetooth mobile, non-mechanical is this, period. Um, however, if you need navigation, so if you want navigation on your, you know, your iPad or something like that, or you need it on your computer or on your Steam Deck, and you want to have a track point input for people who are ThinkPad users, you know what I'm talking about, how good these things can be, our old school computers in general, because other devices have them as well. This is going to be superb in terms of navigation. It's all built into one. You basically have that. You don't have to have a trackpad built in. You get the little nib there, which is equivalent if you want to get the hang of it. And it still has a really superb typing feel. Um, not as nice as the MX keys, obviously, um, but second, I would say. This is probably the second best portable Bluetooth uh, membrane scissor switch keyboard that I've used. I have actually used other ones, um, and it's really, really good. So here's my takeaway. If you're looking for a mobile keyboard, you know, you have these mechanical keyboards that are wired. This is out, obviously. It's not, not Bluetooth. Um, this is a Bluetooth brown switch 
mechanical keyboard, great typing experience on this here, but it's substantially, substantially heavier. Um, probably almost double, if not three times heavier than that. It's a pretty heavy keyboard. Um, it's unwieldy. You know, the keycaps can fall off in your bag. It's substantially thicker. Um, it's noisy when you're typing on it, even if you're quiet. Use this in class versus that someone's going to kill you. Uh, I like the sound of it, but other people won't when I'm typing on it. So, you know, you can have something like this. This is going to be a superior typing feel. You know, if you have a semi-permanent setup, um, you know, like you have an iPad setup or a Steam Deck or something that you're permanently hooked into, this is going to be a superior typing experience, obviously. Um, but it's not mobile and there's no navigation here. So you're going to have to have a mouse or you're going to have to use some other means to it. Um, still a great keyboard. So then you're looking at more mobile options, you know, things like these. You can have those little fold portable ones. Those are terrible. They're good for like a phone, but they're not good overall. So then you're looking at something like this. You have the MX keys, which is again, like a semi-permanent setup. It easily fits into a bag. You can pop it into a bag. Um, and it has something kind of like the Apple keyboard, but it's way superior to the Apple keyboards. Um, nice typing feel on this. Um, this is going to be your probably the best mobile typing experience you can get. Um, it's not going to beat out, in my opinion, a, blue, a mechanical keyboard, um, but it's going to provide a very similar quality of typing experience. I use this and I have very little errors. It feel, feels nice when I'm typing on it. Um, I have confidence with it. And the build quality is great, so you can easily toss it into a bag. It's a little heavy, um, but you can have multiple setups there. You can buy the little like bolt connector and have the dongle, but it's like super expensive. So most people are going to be using this with Bluetooth. So there's a lot of advantages to it. I'd say best non-mechanical typing experience period that is available on the market is this here. Um, anything that's not mechanical is going to pale in comparison to this. But again, you don't have any navigation, right? So you're going to have to hook up. You're going to have to use your iPad with a pen. You're going to have to touch the screen. You're going to have to have a mouse set up. If you have a laptop set up, same thing. If you have your, uh, your Steam Deck hooked up, you're going to have to use the little navigation pads. So that's going to be a limit. You know, you're going to carry two devices then, this and a navigation device. So then you're getting into a device like this. You know, this is good for like a media use. Hook it into your TV. You, know, you can navigate your TV with the buttons there. Um, the typing experience is fine. It works. It's serviceable, I would say, but you're not going to want to sit down and pump out essays on this thing. It's there's it's just not good, right? Like, if there's nothing else, sure, you could use it. It's not a bad typing experience, but I would not want to type out an essay with something like that. So. Um, you know, the build quality is crap, but it's meant to just sit beside your TV. It's like a media unit. It's fine. So then you're looking at something like this, you know. Um, you, have the, you have the navigation that's built into this, so you can navigate with it. In this case, it's a track point. So if you're not used to that, you know, you might have to get the hang of it, but you can navigate with it. You get a track point, and track points are ex excellent. This is a good track point, no problem with it. In fact, it's better than my Z13, which is a super expensive ThinkBook, ThinkPad. Um, so you have navigation, it works on the iPad, it works on uh, Steam, uh, it works on the iPad, it works on the Steam Deck, it works on, obviously works on PC, and it's going to work on Android, it has an Android mode, so that's totally fine. Um, and then the typing experience is excellent. I would say probably the best, second best kind of membrane mobile keyboard I've ever used. It, the only thing that's going to beat it is the MX keys in terms of the typing experience, and it's comparable. The MX keys is better. This is very, very, very good. And the thing is, I'm actually used to this type of keyboard because I use ThinkPads over the years for years and years. So I'm actually more accurate with this keyboard than I am with that. Okay, so here we are plugging this into my uh, my, my desktop. Um, so we'll plug this in over here into this light thing here. There you go. Already recognized. And uh, yep, it's already typing. Okay, so the uh, wired portion there is not for uh, hooking it up. Uh, it, it is not a wired keyboard. You cannot use this to hook it up. Um, it just doesn't work. Um, so that's out of the question, but why would you want to do that when you have the 2.4 gigahertz um, dongle, which, you know, these things don't have input like whatever, whatsoever. If you find that the Bluetooth is a problem, you can use Bluetooth on multiple devices. 
But if you find the Bluetooth is laggy, which it can be, depending on your situation, uh, you know, you can just use the dongle and then you're fine. So wire, wiring is for charging um, and then dongle or Bluetooth are for connecting. So the case that I'm going to be using this for is I'm going to plug this into my media unit, which is my TV. It's going to be plugged in the back of my TV. And then I can use this as a media uh, keyboard that I can navigate my TV with. Um, and then primarily I play my Steam Deck around my TV anyways. So, you know, I'm probably going to leave this over there. Um, and if I'm using my iPad, other than for productivity purposes, I might be sitting over there as well. So, you know, this will probably be sitting in my living room. And I'll have, whenever I need to use it on my TV, I'll use the dongle, hook that up, and then switch to Bluetooth when I want to use it with my Steam Deck or when I want to use it with my laptop. Uh, it's an easy, easy as just switching it over and just making sure it's connected, and away you go. Okay, so here's my next test. I'm going to try to hook this up to uh, Bluetooth on my Steam Deck here. Let's go in here. Um, this is the primary reason that I bought this device, um, is because you, it's not terrible to navigate the Steam Deck with this. You get that little tactile feel, and it's not bad. Like, it's actually easier if you use it with a finger. It's basically a trackpad, but it is slightly cumbersome. And then you have the on-screen keyboard. So really, you know, you can navigate the Steam Deck, even in desktop mode, without anything. But I was finding that, you know, I was using the MX keys hooked up to this, or I was wiring up a keyboard, and then I was having a Bluetooth mouse, and it was just this massive setup here you know i don't i'm trying to minimize things and i just had this massive setup you know if you're using your steam deck and hooking it up to a monitor and using it externally sure i guess that's fine but for me you know i, I use my steam deck exclusively as a mobile device that's why i bought it um and so and i end up i love it as a result but the thing is i do have to come into desktop mode and do stuff sometimes um and so you know i need to plug into it and have access to you know easy navigation rather than cumbersome on-screen controls. So um, that's the main reason that I got this device. So let's go with this here automatically like it did on my PC. So I'm gonna have to go add it. There it is right there, track point keyboard two. Next, I have to type that just like on Windows. Seven, four, three, enter. And there we are. Okay, so let's see how well the little track point nib works. Survey says, ooh, it's really nice actually. So the track point nib, you know, you can use this here. You can use touch screen controls, which is terrible in desktop mode. This is fine. It's basically, if you use it like this, it's okay. Using it like a little track point, track pad is fine, a little bit better. But if you have a Steam Deck, you know what I'm talking about. It's fine, it's serviceable, but it's not the best ever. It's impressive for what it is, we'll put it that way. But it's not the best experience, whereas this here, I mean, come on. We're looking at real desktop experience here. And if you've used track points, you know what I'm talking about. They are really good. Like you can see here, this is really, really nice. Um, you know, you can come up here, you can scroll, and you can still use the touchscreen. You know, if you want, you can use the touchscreen as needed, but you don't need to, you can just use this. Uh, you know, you can come into your files. You can navigate that way. You can right click, right? right click you can left click center I didn't know what that actually would do on here but it looks like center did something xcloud gaming beta not sure oh it creates sticky notes or something I'm not sure that's cool apparently the center button makes sticky notes or whatever these things are 